I hugged a hundred strangers over the summer. So in this video, I'm going to share 10 things that I learned. In the beginning of the summer, I made a bucket list. And on that bucket list, I had the goal of hugging a hundred strangers. I don't know why, honestly, but it changed the way I made decisions forever. I had a rule that if I knew the person's name, then they would not count. I don't have any footage of the hugs. So if anybody on the comments is like, uh, I don't believe you unless I see you with a hundred strangers uh, like that you've hugged. Sorry, Chief, I did not do that. So yeah, let's just hop into it. And I'm really excited to share 10 things that I learned from hugging a hundred strangers. So the first thing that I learned was take action. When I made this goal, I really just was like, oh, this is my summer bucket list. I had a couple of other things on there. It wasn't until I was talking with my family and I mentioned that was on my bucket list, did I realize like, oh, I have to like do this. Number two, the, the second thing that I learned with hugging a hundred strangers was accept rejection. I was afraid of getting rejected. I was really, 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 really scared of of asking and then somebody saying no. And it was something that I was struggling to accept within myself. And so by hugging a hundred strangers, I got really good at being okay with people saying no, because it's kind of an intimate thing asking for a hug from somebody you do not know at all. And it pushed me out of my comfort zone in that place where I was okay with rejection because it wasn't something that I, you know, was taking personally. Even though like they were rejecting a hug from me, it wasn't something that I was so offended by or hurt by. And it was something that I honestly feel like made me more courageous and stronger in the face of rejection to keep going. So that led me to the third thing that I learned, which is body language. Be aware of body language. I would, I'm an empath, so obviously I would be aware of emotionally how uh, initially I would feel from just looking at that person. And, and then from there, when I approach them and ask them, how are they reacting? This ties into the fifth thing that I learned, which is be so aware of your settings. When you're asking a stranger for a hug, uh, probably don't do it in like an alleyway or somewhere really sketchy and potentially dangerous. Do it in an open space where there are other people. I think this is an obvious thing and it makes a stranger and you feel a lot safer. It definitely made me feel a lot safer. So when I was asking for a hug from a stranger, generally speaking, it would be on a road where there would be other people walking by and traffic and whatnot so that, you know, there were witnesses just in case anything happened, God forbid. But I think that creates a space where it both feel a little bit more safer because it's not like I'm ganging up. I noticed that when I went with a group of people and asked a stranger for a hug, the chances of them saying no were a lot more likely because there were, you know, one against like four. Just, I would have my friends around with me and that probably made the stranger feel really uncomfy. And so I thought, and I'm pretty sure that when I asked in larger groups of people and it was just me approaching them, generally speaking, I had a little bit better than than vice versa. The, the person would be a little bit more accepting because their friends are right next to them. They feel more safe and therefore they uh, allow themselves to receive that hug. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much three and four about being aware of body language and being aware of the settings. Uh, of course, those are kind of like the same thing, but, but also very different. Two things that you have to keep in account wherever you are. And I feel like I grew that skill throughout asking a hundred strangers for hugs. Um, now this kind of ties into the fifth thing that I learned, which is about storytelling. When I'm going to a person and asking them for a hug, I realized that people like stories. So I would tell them I have 
uh, goal of hugging 100 strangers. And just by simply telling the story, I feel like it increased the likelihood of somebody being okay with giving me a hug. So that's number five. And number six is ask and you shall receive. If I did not ask, and I kept this in my mind, and I was like, I want to hug 100 strangers. And then I just start going to people and hugging them. I don't think I would have the same success rate if I didn't ask them. So number six being about asking and you shall receive. It was really powerful. And I didn't realize just how amazing the practice of asking is especially to a stranger which owes you nothing and does not know you at all why would a stranger help you or give you anything because you asked surprisingly yeah just asking is declaring out into the universe that hey i desire this and guess what the universe hears you in the form of a stranger in this case and sometimes they accept for me, it was almost a way of communicating to the universe and testing how I was communicating by asking strangers for hugs. I want to give the universe all this love. If you know me and you know this channel, you know we're all about love, light, joy, and peace. And so I wanted to explore giving love and what that respectfully looks like in, in everyday life. And so asking strangers for hugs helped me understand how do you ask the universe for things. It was crazy. I started asking more questions. I started receiving a lot more help because I was able to ask the right kind of questions to the people that I knew could help me. So it really did help me build the skill of asking and knowing a little bit more of who to ask for what and how to ask them. And that also, of course, ties into what I was talking about with the fifth lesson, which is storytelling. Sometimes just asking somebody for a hug, it's scary. Like, you know, I, again, very afraid of rejection. I asked a stranger for a hug and it, the conversation kind of goes like this. Hey, um, would you like a hug? What? Yeah, I'm hugging a hundred strangers. It's on my bucket list. So, um, yeah, would you like a hug? Oh yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Sure. Thank you so much. You are the 25th person I've hugged. Cool. And so that is an illustration um, of what most of the me asking a stranger looked like. I would ask them the question. And then I would follow up with a really short story of why I'm approaching you in the first place and wanting a hug. This is my goal. And I think the coolest part was after the hug, that made the stranger feel like they are now a part of my story. They're, you know, they're contributing to this person's goals. And hopefully it gives them a little good feeling for helping me and, and of course, giving that amazing hug. Now, number seven was something that I learned and I was attending a school called Build Space. Uh, Build Space is a school to work on your own ideas. And I had the pleasure of being there for three months where I got to work on my startup with 30 plus other creators. And it was an amazing time. One of the biggest things I learned were making aggressive decisions. And I love how this 19 year old now millionaire, which literally made a business and is making a million dollars in annual revenue this year, described making decisions in this way. You are in a race. It's yourself and somebody else. And you get to a fork in the road. Now, a lot of people stop in the fork in the road to analyze which way is faster. If you just make the decision right there as quickly as possible and move forward, chances are by the time the other person decides which way to go, you will already be done with that part of the journey. So it doesn't really matter which way is easier or harder. What matters is just starting and figuring it out as you go. So with that in mind, it really helped me with making aggressive decisions. 
In fact, in 24 hours, I hugged over 20 people. And that is because I got out of my head and I am a super overthinker. But when I started making aggressive decisions, realizing, hey, I have a goal of hugging 100 strangers, that means I have to ask probably over 100 strangers if they would like a hug. It got me out of my head, and as soon as I saw a person, in that moment, I would make a decision if I should hug them or not. I think my favorite instance or example of this was when I had just learned about aggressive decisions. And I was walking down the road that night to my apartment. I was with my friend, and we passed this guy that was sitting on the side of the road. And in my head, I felt like he would probably be a good person that could use a hug. And I actually walked right past him. And then I stopped and I said aggressive decisions. And I turned around and I asked them if they would like a hug. And he said yes. And I gave him a hug and it was awesome. So after that, I kind of felt fueled. Now, in my head, I had been rejected right before that that dude that accepted my hug and so I was definitely overthinking when I walked past him the first time but I realized that the important thing is if you feel in your gut to do something just do it and I'm really happy I did and I started practicing that more and more with some strangers getting over my fear of rejection or judgment and just aggressively making the decision that I'm going to hug 100 strangers hey would you like a hug now number eight The eighth lesson that I learned was about maintaining your energy. Um, What I mean by that is that you know that your girl is a little spiritual. She's a little cuckoo in some ways. Um, Now, you know that when you create a relationship, a bond with any living being, you create a uh, channel. And, you know, and the channel, it grows as your connection and and your relation with that being grows. Now, I would say that, you know, starting off hugging a stranger is a pretty small channel, right? It's it's pretty thin. And the more you think about and the more energy you pour into it, the larger it gets. Now, hugging a hundred strangers, I'm a pretty empathic person. And of course, I'd be thinking about all the people that I hugged and hoping that they're okay. But that can be really tolling on a day-to-day life where I'm at a school working on my startup and I have a lot of other things to focus on as well. So what really helped me was cord cutting. Now, actually in the soul residence, me and my soul sister, Aria, were talking about this with their group. And the the beauty of a channel is that it will grow the more energy you pour into it. So to prevent my energy from being torn in all of these ways and being stretched, which, well, it still was definitely stretched, that was the purpose of me hugging 100 strangers. I still wanted to make sure that I was being respectful and clean about it. And so for me, that meant doing cord cutting every single night I got in home for the day. This really helped me just feel more a sense of peace of mind. And as I, you know, cut the cords energetically, because again, a hug is an amazing thing. Our hearts are connected and we create this beautiful channel. But I wanted to make sure I was giving that energy back to where it belonged. So doing this cord cutting kind of ritual every single night after I hugged strangers really helped me to cleanse my energy and send off that energy in a good uplifting vibration, whatever energy that we had exchanged. Uh, I just felt like this was just a really good energetic maintenance thing to do. It made me feel lighter and more thankful for the beings. Of course, always just sending a prayer of gratitude and thanks, sharing that love, light, joy, and peace that I felt for them, accepting my hug, and yeah, just cutting it so that they can go on their way and I can go on mine. Okay, the ninth thing that I learned with hugging a hundred strangers was actually how to hug better. Um, with hugging a hundred strangers, I realized that each person has their own level of comfort. 
Uh, for the most part, I really like when the heart spaces connect because I feel like that's an important part of a hug and that's how I like to hug. But I also learned this really cool technique of back padding as you're hugging so that you are at least feeling the heart space. For me, I think a big part of hugging 100 strangers was connecting heart to heart with 100 strangers. So giving a good back pat if I was not like chest to chest with this person was just another way to connect with the heart space. And it was kind of cool because then my friends started reporting when I gave them hugs, just like how energizing the hug was just because of the back pat. <laughs> so I don't know, this is just something I learned that I thought was really cool. Just, you know, giving a good pat on the back when I give a hug. And, um, and yeah, I think this will tie in to the last lesson, lesson number 10. Now, lesson number 10 came with the last per person I hugged. Uh, this lesson is that we are all NPCs to some extent. And I say this because I had hugged 99 people. I knew that night I wanted to hug my last person. I knew I was going to. I walked my friend to her apartment and her neighbor was outside smoking on the steps. So I asked him, do you want to hug? And he said no. Uh, and then we were just standing there for a little while longer and he pointed out this guy that was pacing around the block and he said that dude's an NPC. You can watch him. He's gonna stop right after the telephone pole for about 30 seconds and sure enough we watched this dude cross the street walk up the street and stop for about 30 seconds before continuing to walk it was just the weirdest thing ever we watched him do two more laps crossing the street going on the sidewalk and then crossing the street again stopping in the same spot and it was honestly kind of eerie because it was like pretty late at night like 11 or so and you just have this dude that's like walking around and stopping anyways i found that really interesting and i knew we were all a little bit like npcs and for me an npc is a non-playable character because there are other entities playing within this being so i don't know why i felt led to ask this person for a hug my friend was like don't do it, it's too shady, but I accessed my area, I was like, okay, we got friend's neighbor, we got my friend, you know, I think I'll be okay, hopefully, I mean, you know, yeah, things can, if I'm meant to go, that just means God says it's my time and I will accept it, but thank God it was not my time to go and um, the stranger accepted my hug. I gave them a hug, I gave them a backpack, and um, I felt led to give them another back pat and they literally like their whole tone of voice changed. And I literally felt like I was knocking out some kind of entity from them that was within them, making them do this very repetitive kind of pacing. And it was time for their body to be restored back to the soul that it was originally intended for. Of course, like this is just me processing this but at the time i was just like i'm gonna give this person two big back pads one to knock the soul in out one to knock the soul in done um so that was really interesting uh i really thankful that was my last hundredth stranger that i got to hug and um yeah i'm so thankful that i'm safe i'm so thankful that i have the opportunity to go and hug a hundred strangers that it was uh overall a really positive experience and i hope that this inspires you to go out there and hug a stranger because you never know who you might meet or how you might change their lives or what you may learn and that is the moral of the story so go out there give a stranger a good hug and make the world a little bit of a better place so much love i hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did press the thumbs up uh, i will give you a hug <laughs> and i will see you in the next one god bless namaste